okay, so now we're looking at. Um, why have I forgotten your name? <laughs> now we're looking at Necro's fight. I was going <laughs> to call you DDD Necro. <laughs> and now we're looking at Necro. <laughs> DDD Necro. Necro. Now we're going to look at DDD Necro's uh, build. But well, he currently runs with. Um, using some of the OCG cards here. But those should be shortly released in the TCG also. So you guys will be able to adapt this into your own builds in the near future. So, Necro, talk us through your own deck build. Alright, so uh, starting from the top, you want to run uh, three of this Rider Rock. This guy is your main playmaker, of course. So it's it's a uh, fair to note that he will obviously be a three elf monster mm -hmm. for your deck. Cool. Next, I run two Savant Thomas because of the fact that how uh, eight, how rank eight is one of your main uh, Xyz that these ranks that you uh, run for interference. Cool. So, so Thomas is really is a really good monster because of that. Next, I run the one uh, D Orthros because of uh, Vanities. Yep. And just my easy way to get rid of uh, Vanities. Next, I, I personally run two uh, Copernicus because the fact of his uh, milling effect is really good. I only run that such a such a lower number count because of the fact that I need to make space for certain cards. Gotcha. Anyway, so next I run that uh, two Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit as a. Uh, a hand trap that I can use for uh, taking out to make sure that I can stun my opponent out of their plays. Yes, which is very, very important in the current environment. Yep, definitely. Next, one DD Ghost. I found uh, one copy of Ghost is really good. You can run two if you want. I prefer the one, though. Cool. Okay, next, the two uh, Max C's for interference plays, basically to discourage them to uh, make their mass special summon plays. Yep. Mm -hmm. Next, three of each slime. Uh, we talked about this earlier, but these cards are amazing. Yep, definitely. Definitely. Next, three Omiya and three Savant Kepler. Cool, cool. I'll do you all for monsters. Next, for spells, three Allure of Darkness. Because of the, deck that, because of the fact that the deck is primarily dark attribute, you'll be able to at least uh, use the lore to help uh, refresh your hand. Say like you're having a dead draw and you need so you need to banish something. Gotcha. Um, are there any uh, particular boxes which are your main targets for Allure? I would say like Ghost is obviously a main target because of the fact that you can recycle anything that was banished. Cool. That's good. Next, one for one. We is it Lamia and Kepler are two of your main key points of this deck. As such, it's actually a good idea that you can get these guys out quickly. Kepler for his search and Lamia for his, for her synchros. Similes. As such, a, as such, it's also it's also why I, I run uh, two copies of Where Art Thou. Now, Where Art Thou is an interesting card. It's a really good searcher for level one um, base decks. Um, I uh, how are you in response to the end phase effect? Uh, one monster dark. Exactly. So in this deck, which is really nice, is normally you have to worry about playing the card that you search, but with Dark, <coughs> excuse me, you don't have to. Which is really, really good. Yeah, you don't have to, especially like since you can stack these two cards on top of each other. Like I got four k four k life point gain off of just playing these That's two. That's phenomenal. Really, really is. Next, the one foolish barrel to help add to the milling process. Uh, what's your main target for foolish? Say first turn. Uh, Necro, Necro Slime most Necro Slime is the primary target with uh, Lummy as the secondary target. Next, d three Dark Contract with the Gate for obvious reasons of searching. Mm -hmm. Again, um, one uh, we'll talk about Guambo combos there. Yep, and then uh, one uh, Swamp King. Yep, and then a tech card that I was actually recommended to when I was looking around for advice: Refusion. Now this is a card which has been out for ages, but you don't ever see much play. But premature burial for fusion monsters. Yeah, but the thing is with this deck is that it helps add to your fusion spamming a lot. So Without... I let me let me just um, fathom a guess. Seeing as most of the um, monsters, uh, most of the fusions are openly generic in that they only require mm, DD monsters. Are you say using a fusion? To summon out another fusion and then re refusion to bring back your fusion and then you've got another fusion with a fusion. 
that's a lot of fusion. <laughs> a lot of fusion. <laughs> but yeah, my main purpose though when using refusion is to get out two copies of Genghis immediately, wow. so I can go into a, uh, so I can go straight into High King Executive Caesar. Oh, I see. Yeah, awesome. But not only that, but the fact is that uh, your monsters also uh, also will benefit off of that because like you can like for example, say you use like. Say you want to make something like High Executive King Genghis. Yeah. So you use something like you use Dark and then you use another monster. Then you use Refusion, like or like say you use like Genghis and Dark to make High King, High King Genghis. Then you could just revive the Genghis and immediately revive the Dark. Yep. Or vice versa. That's crazy. That's really really cool. Next, I run two dimensional barrier because of the stun. Trap. Uh, one vanity's empty is on my Trap own end. Stun. And uh, one dark contract with the witch. Nice, nice. So you're at 41 cards here. I'm assuming uh, running 41 is no problem for a deck with so much milling and searching in the deck like this. And uh, yep, yeah. Let's talk about your extra deck. As, uh, as for extra deck, uh, we run one copy of Beowulf because Beowulf is really great in what he does, giving all your DD monsters piercing, especially when you combine it with Alexander's 6K attack. Yep. Next, you have a uh, Flame High King Executive Genghis. I'm running. I'm I'm testing it at two for now. If you, but uh, it's been doing pretty well. If you don't want to run, uh, if you only want to run one of Executive Genghis, though, I recommend run a second Dark. Gotcha. And vice versa, one Dark in my build. But you can run the you can run the second Dark if uh, if you are worried about that. But with how much recovery this deck has, you shouldn't be worried about that. Next, two copies of Genghis because Genghis. Yeah. As for Synchros, we run uh, the one Gust High King Executive Alexander, which uh, potentially you can side deck this guy because in the first turn he's not really the best of the deep, of the monsters to go into, but he's still a great asset nonetheless. So uh, when you say in the first turn, are you talking about say if you go first, you don't want him, but if you go second, he's more useful? Yeah, gotcha. because of the fact that he, because of his uh, 6k attack. Anyway, so next, Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. Crystal Wing, pretty standard. Yep, just you can easily make this thing with Alexander or Meteor Burst Dragon and a level one tuner, a la Lamia. Nice. Next is a uh, Curse King Siegfried. Uh, so in that one. Yep, uh, one Cyframe Lord Omega to help uh, recover your banished materials. Best, uh, best, one of the best synchros out there, period. Yep, indeed. One uh, DDD Gus King Alexander. Nice. One Formula Synchron that you can use, you can make with uh, Kepler, Lamia, or Lamia, and uh, Necro Slime. Often... It's, it's... Sorry, go ahead. Basically, it helps you get that free draw and also helps with your synchro plays a little Do bit. You often make this card? I actually do often make this card. Originally, the deck was a lot more synchro spam, and because of that, uh, people ran a, a hyper librarian as well. Mm. Okay, cool. It's because of the, all the mass, because of all the massive of draws. Cool. Next for Aziz, next for Aziz, we're only running three. We had uh, one Kali Yuga. Nice. We have a Titanic Galaxy because Titanic Galaxy is one of your best interference makers. Absolutely. Negating spell effects and also the fact that he can redirect attacks to himself. Yep. And then uh, one wave high king executive Caesar. So um, I'd like you to wrap up this step here by talking about any combos. What say is your first open and play? Is there anything people need to be aware of if they're going to first that you want to summon? If you go in second, what you would do? Um, any kind of combos you want for this deck? <clears throat> Well, really, there are certain decks that you want to look out for when you're playing DDD. Mostly, Zodiac can give this deck a pretty big uh, run for its money, right? With how quick their with how quick their combos right. are. Other than that, you can run count. You can usually run counters to it. One of my favorite counters though to Zodiac in general is has to be Full Force Virus. Okay. Which. You tribute a dark monster with 2,000 or more defense, which you got plenty of those monsters in your deck. Right. And, basically, and basically force your opponent to destroy all monsters they control or that they draw that have uh, 
you know, there are less defense. That's something in your uh, that you might put in your side there. But what about in your main deck? Any kind of combos or what you would use against specific matchups in here? Uh, I guess specific matchups really. Uh, Orthos is good for the vanities users, and uh, Yuki is also good in the sense that it helps uh, get it helps negate uh, the play some more advancing plays. Mm -hmm. Just like normally what Yuki does. Okay, so uh, let me do. Let me try this out then. Um, I press the shuffle button. Your first five cards that you've drawn into your hand are Allure of Darkness, Savant Thomas, Max C, and DD Swell Slime, and uh, DD Ghost. It's your first turn. What do you do? I would Swirl Slime with the Ghost to make a Fusion Monster. Okay. Then Ghost would go off, and then I would be able to mill out, uh, mill another slime. And then I would be able. Then I would risk the allure in order to draw two. And then your next two would be well, you would have shuffled again. But let's say your next two are dark contract with the gate and another swirl slime. Then I would banish the other swirl slime. Then I would use the gate effect to get Ragnarok. Nice. Then, I, then I would use. Then after that, I would use the swirl slime in my grave to special summon Thomas. Then use then use uh, Thomas's effect to uh, on the Ragnarok I put in the scale. Basically, get out Titanic Galaxy or Kali Yuga and go in. That is exactly what I wanted you to say, dude. Very, very well explained. Nicely done, dude. Nicely done. So, um, yeah, basically, yep. first turn, you're looking to set up a big monster like Titanic or any of your negation monsters that can stun your opponent during their turn. Have something like Maxi in your hand in case you need to disrupt their plays. And then, if your worst goal is second, then obviously you want to kind of uh, com combat their build in a different way. Nicely done, dude. Really, really nice. Uh, we're going to wrap up this video by showing off some of your uh, replays, so let's make a cut to that. What? Three, two, one, go. Okay, so we, here we got my uh, duel against a Skull Serving player. Uh, right off the bat, my hand I immediately knew was actually a really good hand going into it. And then immediately when he used uh, Dark World Dealings, I knew what to do. So there you can see I'm going straight for the usual combo play that you would see a DD player normally go into with the, this newest build. This de this deck is really strong, which is why I actually like to call this deck my main, actually. As you can see, I immediately, I immediately, from just that simple hand, went into a field of Dark, Genghis, High King Alexander, and Titanic Galaxy. Just giving even more powerful plays, and then ending it off with a Siegfried for, for extra stun. And then this, this Skull Serum player just can't really find anything really to do against me. Especially since I was able to redirect his attack to Titanic Galaxy. Yeah, I take a little bit of damage, but in the end, I come out on top because he just decides I can't deal with this anymore. Wow, dude. Wow. Is that consistent? Is that what you get a lot? That's what I get a lot, but really, as I usually call the DDD in the past and even call it now... This is a high risk, high reward style deck. Let's see. Depending on your hand your just your opening hand can be the deciding factor between a crushing victory and a crushing defeat. So what are typical plays against DDDs that you have to watch out for? Well, obviously the Vandy stun and the D and the D barrier stun. Yeah. Even though D barrier specifically stuns only one form of special summoning, if they call like fusion or synchro, for example. Then you're basically crippled out of your plays Ouch. for a turn. Ouch. Um, so dimensional yeah. barrier is definitely something you have to run out for. Um, what about say destroy uh, destroying your card, say with your dark contracts or your pendulum skills? Uh, really, the pendulum skills don't really matter that much because you have stuff like you have stuff like Thomas in order to uh, revive your pendulum monsters back back to your hand. So say like you use up like a Ragnarok or a Kepler. You just immediately uh, bring it back to your hand and then just reuse it. And are you afraid of hand traps like uh, Ghost Ogre and Maxi? Uh, Maxi can be a problem at times because, like, really, depending on the player, Maxi can be can be the difference between, a, like I said, the crushing victory or the crushing defeat. Because if they can draw other combo pieces while you're while you're off comboing, then then you lose. But at the same time. If you don't want to give them all those draws, you'll be disheartened to do even more combos, mm -hmm. which would make you lose your advantage. Last thing I was going to say is, what about matchups? Um, you said earlier that Zodiacs give this deck a rough time. Um, uh, how, are how are you against other better decks, like Metal Foes and so on? Oh. 
Um, Metal Buzz I've done pretty well on as well. Cool. And and also really the DDD mirror match can still be can still bring you a little bit of trouble. Right, right. What about um, are, really? there, are there any decks where you play against and say, Oh, I, I win instantly? Uh sometimes because really that the main the main deck that I can face and immediately say, I've won this <laughs> is burn decks. Oh, of course, of course. Because simply put, if you summon out to Ark against a burn, like a chain burn deck, they will they will have nothing that they can do against you. Cool, cool. Well, dude, that was really, really awesome. Thank you so much for uh, sharing off your knowledge and your experiences with learning the DD archetype. If um, anybody has any questions, is there any way anyone can hit you up or can get in contact with you? Uh, I'll I'll be patrolling the comments every now and then and uh, answer a response. So put, put down a response in the comments down below if you have any questions for Necro or any suggestions for him or any uh, tips or advice. Feel free to whatever you want to say. Feel free to um, put down a comment down below and I'll make sure he gets the message. But other than that, hopefully you guys enjoyed this breakdown of um, uh, the DVD archetype. Uh, this video is a little bit different from what we usually do on the channel. If you've enjoyed this format, do let me know. And I'm sure someone like Necro, or even maybe other guests, will be happy to do videos like these. And if anybody else out there wants to do a video like these, and is interested in being a guest on the channel, and <laughs> sharing off their favourite deck, just let me know, and we'll see if we can hook that up. Uh, Necro, thank you once again, dude. Uh, Alright guys, have a good day, play hard.